In 1999, Indian-American author Abraham Verghese published his second book, The Tennis Partner. This work is a lightly fictionalized memoir, based in large part on Verghese's own experiences somewhat altered to preserve the dignity and privacy of others. In this autobiographical fiction, Verghese describes a deeply felt friendship with a younger man through their work as doctors and their connection as tennis players. Dealing with the complexities of adult male friendship, addiction, and the aftermath of divorce, the tennis partner is a study of grief and resilience. Abraham Verghese is an internal medicine doctor whose life has been devoted to his career, specializing in infectious diseases, primarily AIDS. Abraham has focused on his professional ambitions to the point that he has grown apart from his wife. As the book opens, Abraham, adjusting to their separation, has moved to El Paso, Texas, to start over. In the hospital where he works and teaches, Abraham meets David Smith, an Australian about to start his fourth year as a medical student before going on to residency. David seems brilliant, but also clearly troubled. Reaching out to this young man, Abraham learns that, before he was a med student, David was a talented tennis player on the college tour, someone who could possibly have gone pro. Since Abraham is himself a tennis enthusiast, though nowhere near David's skill level, he suggests they hit around as a way of unwinding and letting off steam. At first, the interaction is just a way of reversing their normal power balance. On the court, David is the teacher, and Abraham is the student. Abraham is obsessed with keeping detailed and tedious notes on his performance, and his evaluation of how other people play. Soon the men develop a strong bond and deep friendship in which they learn to understand and support one another. Abraham loves being David's mentor and is committed to doing his best to help his friend thrive. Eventually, the relationship becomes so close that the lonely and isolated Abraham is jealous when David spends time with other friends, or with his girlfriends. About a third of the way through the book, Abraham learns that David is a recovering four-drug addict. In fact, this is David's second time trying to get through medical school, the last time, he relapsed and had to drop out to go through rehab. Although Abraham is shocked, knowledge of this secret even further strengthens the connection between the men, as Abraham has a better sense of the pressure that David is constantly under. Though the rest of the book closely observes this struggle, the memoir doesn't let Abraham off the hook either. As his marriage falls apart entirely, it becomes patently clear that Abraham's wife is never going to reunite with him. Nevertheless, he lives in an unfurnished and undecorated apartment, unable to tend to his personal life. His loneliness continues unabated, and he does nothing to try to bring other people into his life. The only ray of light in his life is his dedication to his two sons and the efforts he undertakes to remain meaningfully present in their lives. Meanwhile, David is struggling. First, there are the normal challenges of graduate education. As a med student, he is always running out of money and having to handle long commutes and grueling hours. On top of this, his addiction and possible relapse is always hanging over his head. One way David seems to cope is through sex. Although he has relationships with two seemingly lovely women during the course of the book, he sabotages both relationships by cheating on his girlfriends almost constantly. David is a handsome, charming, and effortlessly appealing man, but his view of himself is so damaged that one of the only ways he can improve his self-esteem, at least temporarily, is by successfully seducing an endless parade of women. Like Abraham, David also keeps compulsively detailed notes about himself, but his are about his sexual fantasies and his conquests. The book doesn't spend a lot of time trying to examine exactly why David is the way he is. The closest it comes is a phone call Abraham overhears of David talking to his parents. It is clear from the conversation that their relationship is formal, unsupportive, and that David is constantly trying to get them to approve of him or of what he is doing. Eventually, David relapses and begins using drugs again. Abraham is put in the difficult position of deciding whether to be a supportive friend or to respond as a concerned doctor and teacher. At first, the relapse seems temporary, and David immediately checks into rehab. There, he tries to come to terms, not only with his cocaine addiction, but also with his sex addiction as well, hypothesizing that the drugs are actually a way to self-medicate to stem the sex addiction. It soon becomes clear that David is on a downward trajectory, and the tennis partner ends with David's suicide. In Abraham's devastated response, 
The book shows how little we know about the causes of addiction and how far we are from a reliable treatment of this terrible disease. The book was met with praise, like the author's previous and subsequent titles. As the Kirkus Reviews put it, Verghese distinguishes himself by virtue not only of tremendous writing skill, he has a talented diagnostician's observant eye and a gift for description, but also by his great humanity and humility. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.